So tonight on another thing about Tartan, we welcome Len Penny. Len is from the town of Airdrie in central Scotland and she recently went viral on Twitter after posting a poem written in Scots. Len is very passionate about the Scots language being recognised as an official language rather than just slang or dialect and she uses her Twitter account to promote this. Tonight we are really looking forward to finding out more about Len and the Scots language. So, Len, I really enjoyed your poem, I'm No Having Children. It made me feel really proud to be Scottish and it gave me goosebumps while I was listening to it. So, was there a catalyst to you writing this poem? There was. I, I was speaking to my mum and uh, she's a teacher and she was saying how we were just having a conversation about um, Scots as a language and how she has to sort of keep it out of the classroom or she feels that she has to. Um, because it's it's not professional or it's not the you know it's not the done thing to be speaking Scots in schools mm -hmm. and um, how she's you know she's been teaching for for 20 years so she's always sort of had that and then she feels like as she's as she's had to do that over and over again it's sort of repressed a wee bit of herself and her language so mm -hmm. I was sitting thinking about that and thinking like because Scots is obviously the language of the home um, if parents aren't teaching their their wains Scots it's going to die out so mm -hmm. I thought about it and I thought no do you know what I'm going to write a poem about how I'm going to definitely be teaching my wains it and, yeah. and then, you know a lot of people misinterpreted it actually saying like oh she's not having children this is a poem about, <laughs> this is a, poem about a woman you know expressing a, a dislike of children or a dislike yeah. of children. it's got nothing to do with that I, I definitely they will be will be happy <laughs> they will be called children put it that way <laughs> well that was what I first thought when I seen it um pop up on my timeline was that you were writing a poem about not wanting to have kids but yeah it's definitely not about that <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so have you been writing poetry for long then and how did you first become interested in writing poetry so I've always um ever since I was wee I've been I've been writing poems um but I, I really took an interest in it when uh, I was in about primary four and I got asked to join a burden society and um, you know we were performing barns, we were discussing barns. Every you know, I used to compete in in the competitions around Scotland, and uh, through that it just really sparked an interest in in Scots language poetry because at school obviously we were studying, you know, Shakespeare and Tennyson and 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 poets who who write in English and. Um, and then when, when I was going home and studying the Barnes for my competitions and stuff, it was really, you know, it was like a whole different uh, flavour of poetry. It was a it was a relatable kind of thing because obviously I was speaking Scots and then it gave me the sort of space to be able to write in Scots. And, you know, I, I do, I write prose as well. It's not just poetry, but at the same time, there's something about poetry that you kind of get in prose where it's like yeah. there's a, a brevity and a conciseness that just, you know, you can say a lot more in a lot fewer words uh, in a poem. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, it's definitely an art form, just in like a shorter form, isn't it? Definitely, I. Mm -hmm. And it, it really is such a skill. Poetry is not definitely not one of my strong suits. So do you think it's a skill that you can learn or do you think it's more something that you are born with and naturally good at? Um, I would never, I would say there's not any kind of skill that you can acquire. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you can be... A good singer and you can be a good dancer if you put the work in but at the same time like if, for a lot of people they, they don't like poetry because they they don't even try to write poetry because they see it as something that's quite elitist and quite um you know it's, it's something academic and, and I felt the same way for a while and I didn't even share my poems anyone because I thought oh this isn't it at the same level as all these people I was studying at uni and that yeah. and then you think if you actually sit back and think about it you think no well Burns was popular Burns was an every man you know Burns was not all that and a piece of shortbread as my mum would say <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I mean like it's it's I think it, we're entering a new generation of sort of accessible poetry and that's very much what I try and do because all my poems rhyme um, a lot there's a, a huge debate over whether poetry should even rhyme or not or whether it's laziness just to make everything rhyme but for me I like my poems to rhyme just because it's easy to remember them yeah definitely yeah, the whole point of rhyming is if you take it all the way back to, to sort of the oral tradition of poetry when you couldn't even write things because you, you couldn't even write um 
it's it, rhyming poems are easier to learn because it just sticks in your brain better. And also, I, just, I like I like the sort of clever wordplay of being able to make something rhyme and manipulating sentences to make sure that they rhyme at the end. So that's, yeah. that's what I like. But it, definitely an acquirable skill, as yeah. everything is. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I would say poetry, when, when I hear a poem that isn't, like that doesn't rhyme I don't think of it as being a poem I know they they are poems but not like normally when you think of a poem it is a rhyming thing isn't it I I I enjoy poetry a lot more when it rhymes <laughs> I can appreciate the aesthetics of a poem that doesn't rhyme I mean I study a lot of avant-garde Spanish stuff at uni and it doesn't rhyme so <laughs> that's more for me that's more a poetry that's to be read if a poem's being yeah. said I think I think a rhyming poems always sounds a wee bit nicer in the ears mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I would agree. And your poem, I'm No Having Children, focuses on the difference between Scots and English. You know, you do one line in Scots and then you do one line in English. Mm -hmm. um, so can you explain to our listeners what the Scots language is and how is it different to the English and Gaelic languages? So, I mean, well, it's linguistically similar to English in that it shares a lot of words, mm -hmm. it shares a lot of sentence structure. If you're talking Scots, generally, you know, English people will be able to understand you, people who speak mm -hmm. English. But um, a good comparison to make is sort of maybe Spanish and Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And that, though they're similar, they are very distinct languages because there's words that have no direct translation. There's words that are completely different. You know, it's it's not like a lot of people, a lot of the criticism you get when you speak Scots is, oh, it's just English with a Scottish accent. Yeah. But if you take like the word drich, the word druket, the word, you know, th things like that, it's like there, there's there's no English equivalent to that word that sounds linguistically similar. Yeah. So, and also a lot of the a lot of the influences are completely different to, to English. There's a lot of um a lot well under my videos, my Scots word of the day videos, I get people from the Netherlands saying, Oh, we've got a word that's the same, Scandinavian words, a lot of crossover there. And it's interesting to see the sort of linguistic influences that don't appear in the English language. Um yeah. but having said that, because it was a repressed language and because it was you know, sort of discouraged, a lot of words have fallen out of use. And so it's, I understand why people think it's no a distinct language because they're not aware of the fact that there are so many words that have fallen out of use. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do in my, my Word of the Day series is to take words and bring them back so that we can, you know, yeah. remember them and revive it and sort of, you know, keep it going for a couple of generations more if we can. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm Scottish myself and I was looking at your Scots words of the day and I didn't really know half of them and I thought I would have quite a broad understanding of the Scots language but apparently not <laughs> so I think you're definitely right in that there is a lot that have fallen through as generations have gone by isn't it definitely yeah um so going back to that, so do you feel with your Scots word of the day, do you feel that you're a bit of a pioneer for the resur resurgence in Scots? I mean, I'm just, I'm, st I'm walking through doors that other people have opened. Um, there's been, there's a huge movement, a massive movement. Um, I joined Urvice, which are uh, working to get it recognised in law. Scots recognised as a, as a, a proper language and, and get oh, it respected. Wow. But there's, I'm I'm not doing anything that anybody's no. I'm I'm just putting it on on Twitter. Everybody, yeah. you know, the the work's already been done. People yeah. like Billy Kay and Iona Fife who've been, you know, Scots singers, Scots screevers, Scots, uh, you know, poets and and artists have been doing this for a load of years. I'm just I'm just jumping on the bandwagon <laughs> and and giving my wee giving my wee take on it. Um, yeah. I would say that now people feel a lot more emboldened to speak Scots on the internet. They feel a lot more empowered to be able to reclaim their language, but at the same time the backlash is still there and it's going to be there forever because at the same time you know a repressed language is always going to have people who were repressed and continue that self-repression so you mm. can't blame people that's what i always say you can't blame people for for feeling the cringe because it's not their fault they've had it imposed upon them and then they've internalized it so yeah yeah well, like people don't even realize that they have repressed it themselves do they mm -hmm. I mean, it's even even myself. Like when I'm I'm speaking to certain people, um, in certain circles, academic, professional, I hold back the Scots, and then you sit back and you think, well, why am I doing that? Like, why am I why am I 
why am I pretending to be someone I'm not? Because yeah. at the end of the day, when I go home and I speak to my mum, I speak to my dad, I speak to my brothers and sisters, like I'm using all the Scots words, I'm using the wee phrases, and then you go in, out to uni and it's you put on put on your professional voice and you make sure to enunciate and you make sure <laughs> proper English and it's like, who's that? That's not me. Yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> So, so you speak Scots at home with your mum and dad, but so they taught you the Scots words at home, but did your mum then say, oh, but when you go to school, don't speak like this? Or was it just when you got to school, no one else was speaking like that, so you then re- like held it back? So well, I was raised by my grandparents and my parents, and they, oh, yeah. my grandparents very much spoke Scots. It was, it was very, you know, there was loads of stuff. And then, you, you know, we moved from Airdrie to Dunblane, which is quite a, mm-hmm. you know, there's not a lot of Scots being spoken in Dunblane, um, which is, you know, that's just a, a, an area reason that's not anything to do with anything. But, yeah. you know, at school, you know, you go in and, and my mum would make me my piece and I'd have my piece and I'd go to school and it would be playtime and I'd want my play piece and it would be a snack. <laughs> and it's like there's two there's oh, I, can't, I didn't bring a snack to school I was pretty sure I brought a play piece <laughs> but it's like it's things like that it's things you don't realize like bonnet you know my papa would always put his bonnet on when he was taking me to school mm-hmm. and then you'd get to school and it would be a cap it would not be a bonnet it'd be a cap yeah and you know it, you'd have like you, you know you get a scalp around the lug and then you come to school and it'd be oh you know you got a smack around the ear and it's like what what's the you know it was there was never it never no one ever never said to me oh this is wrong or this is bad English but you you very much got the impression that it was you were doing something that you just you, you wouldn't be understood with and you wouldn't be you know uh-huh. respected for it and that's the same for a lot of people I feel that um that they speak Scots and it's not seen as anything other than slang yeah which is sad because like if you think about it you know. Why can't it be a bonnet or a piece or a lug? Yeah, what's, exactly. What's the, what, what's the harm in having a whole other a whole other set of words for things? It's just a broadening of knowledge. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I grew up with it, like thinking that those words were slang words, and then you weren't to use them in like a formal setting. So I just don't really incorporate any Scots words into my vocabulary now because I've grown up thinking that they were slang. <laughs> When really, like, you grow up and then you realise, oh, wait, they're not actually slang. That's actually a language. <laughs> I think it's something that you can definitely, like, it's it's like any other language. Like, it's learnable and teachable. And mm-hmm. and I, I don't think it's like, oh, you know, we've repressed this to the point we can never say it. I feel like if you, you know, I've got American people who watch me and they say, oh, I used this word the other day. And I'm like, well, that's great. That's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm just trying to try to make sure that there's some words that, that won't die out now. And then yeah, we'll- no, definitely. I think it's a great idea. Um, so you also mentioned that you study Spanish at university. So have you always had a passion for languages or was this something you became more interested in like during school, like later on in high school? So I've always I've always enjoyed language and speech and linguistics and stuff like that. I mean, I read a lot when I was younger. Um, so other people had friends, I had the books. So. <laughs> And then um, when I got to I got to high school and started studying languages and I really enjoyed it. And it wasn't till I started studying linguistics that I then looked at my own language and my own way of speaking mm-hmm. and realised that, oh, hang on. If, if you look at Scots as a modern language, if you look at it as, you know, this isn't just a word, it's a verb. But where's the etymology from? You know, what's the what's the linguistic root of this? What's the what's the crossover with different languages? You realise that it's very different to English. Yeah. You know? And then, and then through learning other languages, it's given me an ability to to teach it in a way that's easy to understand. Because that's why I do, you know, I do my, I, I have my my word, my meaning, and then my example. And the example's not always in Scots. But see, mm-hmm. when I'm learning Spanish words, the example's not always in Spanish. It's it's about putting it in a context that people will understand. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people are like, oh, that's not a Scots word. That's not. And I'm like, well. That's not the point. Today's lessons about this word and that yeah. word is Scots. Yeah, yeah. It's like putting it into a into a sentence that people that don't speak Scots are gonna understand, and then they'll understand what that word means, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you if you li- if you hear the word without even knowing what it means, sometimes you can glean a a definition of it based on the context. Mm-hmm. If I go, "Oh, it's Baltic the day," you know, you you'll know I mean cold. Yeah. Even if you don't, even if you don't know that what Baltic means, and then that's that's you know, then it's in someone's head, or that's an adjective. 
that's a that's a word which means cold it's a synonym for cold or freezing and it's like that's you learned a word and that's your vocabulary expanded yeah 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 just as easy as that isn't it so um do you think that there are any similarities between spanish and scots i mean yes because yesterday's word was screeth right. and we were having a bit of a it was a really interesting discussion actually because the Spanish word for to write is escribir. In French, it's écrire. In German, I'm not sure what it is, but it's they all sound the same. All the languages, they sound the same, apart from English, which is write. So somewhere along the line, you know, Scots kept scrive, mm. which comes from the Latin word, which sounds a lot similar. So it's like here we have a divergence between Scots and English where the Scots makes sense and the English doesn't make sense. Doesn't, yeah. So another another reason is um, that they're similar Scots and, and Spanish is that they're both phonetic, which I love because mm. I can't spell. <laughs> so see, English is a nightmare for me. See, writing in English, it's an absolute nightmare because there's words like thought, enough, and I'm like, why is there a GH at the end of enough? What's, what's you know? And, and, and then a lot there's a debate going on at the minute whether we should have a standardised Scots spelling. And I personally don't think we should because mm. a lot of teachers are seeing when they're teaching Scots in schools that dyslexic wanes are really taken to it and really responding well because there's no standardised spell and there's no pressure. You say it as you speak it. And it, because there's so many different dialects and yeah. regional aspects of Scots, that you know you, you can't standardise that because if you take the word bism, meaning a young girl or, or a broom, depending on where you're from, it can be besom, it can be besom with an I, it can be besom with a Z, with an S, two S's, two Z's. And it's like, who's right? Yeah. How are we standardising this? Yeah. And it's like, I, I, I love Spanish and I love Scots because they're both phonetic. If you know what it says, you know how to say it. That's, that's really cool. I had um, I knew that kind of that about Scots, but I didn't know that about Spanish, that it was kind of, that was mostly phonetic. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Um, so we noticed on your Twitter account that you also brought to light the fact that the word out with is only used in Scotland and your friends in America and even England didn't know about this. I personally didn't know this either. We were so surprised to read this. It's just a word that's like so like in our vocabulary that sounds like a normal English word that you wouldn't even think twice about it being a Scots word. Because it works. It just works. You have you have within and you have out with. And there's no there's no English equivalent. There's no preposition within English that makes as much sense. And that's why it's getting used now as it trickles down in England and even across America. I've had Americans saying I'm going to start using this because it's perfect. It just makes and I make sure to put it in every single academic essay that I can because it's just perfect you just you, you, being a scottish it just makes so much sense you don't realize oh this preposition isn't used elsewhere mm -mm. you know it's it's um, it just, i love the word i find it amazing yeah no, it is a great word i i had no idea i think it's great i'm gonna tell everyone that is my fun fact of the day <laughs> so it's the word wow actually the what what word the word wow really i that's scots and all oh wow <laughs> i had no idea so do you have a like are you able to narrow it down to a favorite scots word do you have a favorite i like satutary <laughs> i think that's a great word satutary. <laughs> it's like a it's like an outside eating area or a conservatory and i just think sit out array it's when you sit out yes <laughs> I don't think, I think it's akin, you know how German, um, the German language has like, you know, words which are just compound words where they just, you know, put one word and then after that. I think it's like that. I think that it's just a simplistic, very easily understood way of making language where it's like, okay, here's where we sit out. It's a sit out area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you put it like that, it's like so like right there in front of you, isn't it? <laughs> makes sense and that's I think a fairly recent one I think it was the 1920s that was coined so oh, right. that's an example of a modern Scots word so maybe that wouldn't have been around in Burns this time but god I love it I think it's amazing no that's a great word I'm gonna start using that <laughs> all my friends will be like what are you all about <laughs> um so you don't actually have a very traditional Scottish name um but do you know if you're linked to a Scottish clan at all 
Hi, so um, I am linked to the Davidson clan on my mum's side. Oh, my okay. grandparents um, were the Davidsons. And then there's the McLeans and the McCulloughs and the Blairs. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot of clans, but my dad's actually no for Scotland. He's been on oh, Ireland, so okay. um, oh, that that's I got the name Penny for him. So yeah, <laughs> oh, that does make a lot of sense because I was um, trying to, I was looking up your name in our. We've got a book for Scottish clans and like what each clan, the names that are linked to, it. and I did have a look for your name, but it just said it was from Murray, like up, like in Aberdeenshire. But that was when it was spelt with a Y instead of an I-E, so that makes sense. Yeah, no, no, Penny's in <laughs> Northern Ireland. <laughs> and did you celebrate your Scottish heritage growing up? And if so, how? Well, as I say, I did a lot of burn suppers, um, competition-wise, and then I would get asked back to to perform at them for, you know, you'd do it for like a £10 book token or something like that. But at that age, you thought you were, thought you were rolling at it. <laughs> But um, I, I remember uh, dragging my parents along to every single one. My dad would stand up at the back. He wasn't a guest. He would just stand up the back waiting for me to perform and then we'd all leave. And it was, it was you know, that was that was a, a way that we celebrated it because every every year, you know, they'd we'd have to do the poem over and over again to learn it. So I'd be like, right, guys, we're going to, <laughs> you're going to sit down and I'm going to say a wee poem to you. But um, my mum teaches music. So loads of wee Scots songs, okay. and loads of wee Scots lullabies and and things like that and uh, you know St Andrew's night and on and and it's just you know it was a very a very normal Scottish household so like mm. you know everything everything that was traditionally Scottish it would be you know like um whenever Andy Murray was playing we all <laughs> we were all sitting around the tv like now <laughs> Scotland's time to shine but <laughs> it's, it's yeah I mean I, I feel like Scot a lot of Scottish culture and heritage is is about attitudes and um mm. Like I was very much taught the same way that Robert Burns is, you know, he bases all his work on is just sort of like everybody's the same. You're no better than everybody else. Like, yeah. you know, sort of egalitarianism, uh, an independent, independent thought kind of thing. And and I feel like a lot of a lot of Scottish identity is rooted in that. Yeah. Um, so yeah. No, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And um, finally, we ask everyone this question: What is your favorite tartan? I'm biased, but I'm going to say the Davidson one because I like the colours and it looks nice in my hair. So, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't even know what tartan I'm wearing at the minute. That was incidental, but <laughs> that's just H&M's finest. But, uh, um, yeah, no, I, I really like the Davidson one. Um, I, I haven't actually got any of it, like, in, in you know, like a scarf or that. But if, I'm ha yeah. if I have to pick anyone, I'd pick the Davidson one. But take it this way, my husband will be wearing a Davidson kill that I would wear. <laughs> If that ever happens. It is a really nice start and I would have to agree with you there. So thank you so much for joining me today, Len. It was so interesting to hear all your thoughts on the Scots language. It was really it was really interesting. Yeah, well, um, so I wish you a safe next few months and I look forward to seeing what you get up to in 2021. Uh, you too. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas. Thank you. No worries. <laughs>